A new study has found that hormone therapy routinely given for prostate cancer therapy may be associated with abnormal changes in the brain's white matter. Well, here to tell me a little bit more is Dr. Anna Platabello from the University Hospital of the Canary Islands. Hello to you. Hello. So tell me about this research. Recent research have highlighted the important role of testosterone in cognition and some observational and even randomized trials supporting a link between the androgen levels and the cognitive function. So for that reason, testosterone has been proposed as a neuroprotective factor for the brain. So you thought that there was perhaps, you knew from clinical experience that there was some cognitive decline yes. on the hormone therapy. Yes, of course. So for that reason, uh, ADT, the androgen deprivation therapy, is a mainstay treatment for prostate cancer and its goal is to reduce the level of androgens. So patients under androgen deprivation therapy lose this theoretical neuroprotective effect of testosterone. So for that reason, we decided to perform this study and the aim of this study is to uh, describe what are the morphological changes in the brain of a group of prostate cancer patients that are under androgen deprivation therapy and to elucidate the relationship between brain morphology, cognitive impairment and ADT. And you're not saying that ADT causes these lesions in the brain? Not, of course. We think that these brain lesions may be done because uh, patients lost this neuroprotective effect of the cell. It still means, does it, that ADT's future is in doubt or may need to be reassessed, do you think? Well, it depends. I think uh, this is a small study and we have to uh, be cautious with these results because uh, we need to, uh, to perform an external validation of that. So the clinical long-term implications are yet not known. But I think this study highlights three important points. The first is that clinicians must be aware of this possible toxicity and we have to learn how to identify and which are the tools we have to identify patients. The second point I think is important is uh, if we can validate these results in a prospective study, this will have really clinical implications. In because it wasn't everyone, was it, who had the same level yes. of cognitive decline? Yes. yes. One Tell of the clinical implications is that we have seen that all of the patients not, uh, are not the same or have not the same susceptible to develop a cognitive impairment. In our uh, study, we have seen that the lower educational level, the lower educational level, and even a higher degree of dependency are at most risk of developing a cognitive disease. And even on the MRI scans, you could see that there had been changes in the brain, but there wasn't necessarily a decline in cognitive function. Yes, of course. So how do you explain that? Well, uh, may, we don't exactly, uh, I can't ask you this question, but we think that it may be something related to a very new concept that is called cognitive reserve that it may be, uh, you, you can train, if you train your brain during your life, you are going to have a more cognitive reserve and maybe it's a protective factor of cognitive disorders. So you say it's quite a small study, so there's more work to be done. Are you going to continue working in this area? Yes, we are fascinating on this topic and I think really this is a challenge for urologists and we, we need to work with neuroscientists in order to know exactly which patients are at risk of developing this toxicity. And now we are working in a case control study and we are going to start a prospective longitudinal study in which we want to uh, look for some risk factor. And um, for example, now we are testing some genetic polymorphism related to neuronal plasticity in order to see if there could be a genetic predisposition. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Latabello, thank you very much. Thank you very much.